if it were a noise, it would be... Yeah, it's light, it's fresh, it's juicy. Global ambassador for a new age scotch. That exists to put scotch into weird and wonderful and very different places where you're not traditionally used, used to seeing it. It's just an amazing ability to talk in this really approachable and modern language while talking about distilleries that are really traditional. We have got the 12-year-old, 15-year-old and the 18-year-old. Five years or so in Scotch, we've literally went, do you drink um, whiskey? And someone goes, uh, no, I don't. And we go, go, drink that, <laughs> right? So it is within our interest to not scare people off. It is within our interest to offer brands like the Singleton in delicious formats that look like that. I mean, it's pretty appealing. I mean, look at that. It looks great. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Discover series with the Whiskey Advisor. I'm Uday Balaji. So today we're going to be discovering all things, the Singleton of Glen Dullin with Diageo Global Ambassador for New Age Scotch, Irvin Trykowski. Hey Irvin, how are you doing? Welcome to the series. Hi, how are you? Thank you very much for having me. I'm super good, uh, really excited to be here and talk all things Singleton with you. Glad to have you. I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. Uh, but guys, just before we jump into it, could you please uh, like, subscribe and hit the little bell so you'll know every time we have a new video in the series. So Irvin, I see you've got three glasses. I've got only one. Uh, so what do you have in your glass today? That's that's not that's not fair at all. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so today I've got the single and I've got Dylan. I've got three expressions in front of me. I've got the twelve year old, the fifteen year old, and the eighteen year old, which I'm going to take you through uh, a little bit later on. And also we're going to be making a drink with them called the Singleton Plus Two, um, because that's oh, kind of the, one of the things that um, I kind of. I like to do with single malt is kind of open it up to new experiences and to new people that maybe aren't necessarily single to, uh, single malt drinkers. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's uh, kind of making the category a little bit friendlier and more approachable for people <laughs> is my main job. <laughs> yeah, I've got the 12 myself. So awesome. without further ado, Slanja. Slanja, cheers. Cheers. So you just said, you know, you want to uh, make it more accessible to um, the new drinker. So just, I'm sure everybody is curious, your title, Global Ambassador for a New Age Scotch. I've never come across that one before, but the no. first time I came across uh, your video was uh, Scott Sound Radio on Instagram with you and Gunn, you know, and this is a huge departure from what I'm used to seeing. So I'd just love to know a little more about, you know, this wonderful sounding title and what you do and how you got here. It's an awesome question. I don't think there's many of us kicking about, but I think it is something that you will start to see and it will become more prevalent. So basically New Age Scotch, as I perceive it, is anywhere um, I basically exist to put Scotch into weird and wonderful and very different places where you're not traditionally used, used to seeing it. So it is very much um, pretty um, uh, unique food pairing events. It is our Scotch Sim Radio. I do talk a lot about music and flavor and, and, and lighting and the way that it can all affect the way that we experience Scotch. A massive part of my job is talking to bartenders and world-class bars, getting them to pick up the bottle of single malt and get it into some of their incredible cocktails, which isn't something that historically um, we have done um, with scotch and especially not with single malt. So it's a hugely important part of the industry uh, and it is something that I'm sure more companies will be doing very soon because we need to recruit new consumers. And it, my role is very much about kind of breaking the perceived rules of single malt drinking. I've just realized I've said this with three glasses in front of me filled with neat single malt. <laughs> But yeah, that's kind of what it's about. And the Scotch Sound Radio Show is um, a kind of fairly unique take on mine and Ewan's um, views on single malt scotch and on blends as well and uh, how we think about music. And it's just using that music hook to kind of bring people on board with it. Everyone likes music. Everyone loves hearing things. Everyone loves things that are interactive. And it's just aligning scotch with that. Because who doesn't love scotch music, right? 
Now we're talking about Scotch and music. I've been tripping on your uh, playlist quite a bit lately. So I'm going to be putting that in the description, guys. It's on Spotify. It's a really, really fun playlist. We're having a party at home. Don't think twice. Yeah. But uh, talking about fun, are you ready for the rapid fire round? Yeah. Oh, 100%. I want rapid fire. <laughs> All right. What is your first whiskey? Oh, ever. Um, 2015, probably. Um, that's the first one that I really remember trying and enjoying. Uh, what's your favorite bar in the world? Oh, bar in the world. Um, whiskey bar. Um, Plot still in Glasgow. Um, mm -hmm. Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I like the Glasgow pub, pub thing. The Warriston and the Plot still. And what's your favorite food? Food. Um, anything hot. Um, chicken wings. Kind of, I love, I love Indian food. Not just saying that, but anything that's got a bit of kick to it. What's your favourite sport? Uh, I used to play basketball um, uh, as a as a, a, a kind of a teenager. But um, <laughs> you do like darts. I don't know if it's a sport though. <laughs> Well, it is. A, I actually quite enjoy watching the World Championship of Darts, you know. It's definitely a bar sport, at least. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. And, and the thing is, as well, there's a Scottish guy that's quite good at it as well, called Gary Anderson. And I don't know how much you know about Scottish sport, but we don't get very much uh, in the way of successful Scottish sports stories. So we kind of tend to latch on to anything that we can get. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it cats or dogs for you? Dogs. Dogs, dogs, only answer. I've got three French bulldogs, all dogs. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> okay, normally I would ask uh, books or music at this point, but is that, there's no point, right? So I'm going <laughs> to ask you, uh, bacon or Nutella? Bacon or Nutella? Um, bacon, bacon, but it's got to be like the best. We get um, bacon from this this farm around here and it's it's like no bacon I've ever tasted before, bacon. Oh, Maybe bacon and a bit, a bit of Nutella. I can't decide. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> bacon coated with Nutella, maybe. All right, that'd be that good to that sound. I have your cake and eat it too. Uh, <laughs> All right, beaches or mountains? Mountains. I hate, I hate sand. I hate it. <laughs> I, I know exactly what you mean. I like sitting by the beach and having a drink, not actually walking on it. <laughs> Exact place, uh, yeah. No, um, oh, in Scotland, the only real option is mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee or tea? Uh, probably tea. More variety. Easier to make at home. Mm -hmm. Batman or Superman? Oh, Batman, badder. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Just to close out, what is your favorite whiskey memory of all time? I don't. I think there's this. I, I talk about this quite a lot, but I had this magical moment at a bar in Taipei, and it was the strangest bar in the world. It was this like mod bar, which is like kind of Britpop the nineties, and I walked in, and it's called Bar Mod. It's in Taipei. I think it's a really well-known whiskey bar, but I didn't know we were going in there. And I remember standing at the bar with you in the weirdly, and looking from like, across to like one o'clock, uh, sorry, eleven o'clock, and all the way around to like two or three o'clock, and there was just this bar full of whiskey. Right, and it must have been three, four hundred bottles, and it was my first ever international trip on the job, and uh, it was just this real moment of this, this, it's everywhere. Everyone loves scotch. Like I've come six thousand miles away from home, and like look, like and they, they know more about it than we do. They like they interact with it better. They make better drinks with it. I, I, I was just like, this is mind blowing, and it was just a bit of a, it was a bit of a eureka moment for me. So yeah, probably that. Um, that or um, I think everyone um, should go to when they're when we're allowed to again go to Port Ellen and have a drink on the lighthouse. Have you been to Iowa? I have, but I've been to the lighthouse at Port Ellen. No, magical. See when the weather is a bit rough and, um, and the waves come crashing over the top of you, and you've got something usually by Lagavulin. It's uh, it's pretty special. Um, obviously, that's kind of quite a a cool area at the moment as well because we're reopening Port Ellen so it's kind of mm -hmm. it's a nice nice bit to get a view on the on the distillery and the work that's happening there. I'm going to do that next time for sure but I know what you mean about bar mod mod I've been yeah. there uh, and 
it's so confusing you know because they don't have a menu and there are so many bottles behind you can't see half the bottles so it took me a while to put in my orders there but what a fantastic place taiwan and their bars uh, kaohsiung has some phenomenal bars as well but we didn't talking about memories one of the first uh, places that i went to on my last trip in scotland in fact the first was uh, the distillery at glenord so a friend of mine picked me up from inverness airport and drove me up to the distillery for a few drams uh, so that's one of the singletons and the other first singleton i ever had was uh, the singleton of dufton my dad had a bottle a while ago and today we're talking about glendullen so could you just tell us about you know the singleton brand and yeah. it's quite unusual to have three distilleries under one brand right it is um it's probably easier to start with the thing that unites them because that's the question that i get but i'm glad you've been to glenord uh it's a magical story i love that you got straight off the plane and straight to the airport <laughs> it gets shows real commitment um <laughs> real commitment um the not straight there but straight to the distillery what to the distillery. right so the three things that um, the the things that unite these wonderful three distilleries are very much the fact that they are all classic traditional scotch whisky distilleries so you've got one foot in the traditional method they're all distilling exactly the same way that you'd expect but the thing that's different is the way that we talk about these brands and the style of spirit that they produce it's all like this kind of amazing green grassy style and then when it's matured it becomes fruity the difference is comes in the slightly different cask layouts which gives us an amazing ability to talk in this really approachable and modern language while talking about distilleries that are really traditional okay because you know as you know as well as anyone that is what people want to hear they want to hear about the guy who turns up the still on manually they want to talk about copper pot stills they want to talk about like nice long fermentation and wooden bats it needs to be that kind of traditional hooks but then when we hand people our whiskies it's not very often that we do it like this just with neat it is very much done in a modern approach it's very much done as a uh, enjoy it however it is that you want to enjoy it whether it be neat whether it be on the rocks whether it be underneath the cocktail umbrella on that beach with the sand between our toes which we both hate and it doesn't matter we design to the we, a whiskey that's designed to be a enjoyable from the first sip if you are having it neat but b be unapologetically enjoyed and enjoyed however you like so the thing that unites these distilleries is our attitude towards how we produce delicious tasting single malt whiskey Mm-hmm. And that that's a really cool concept, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but but to come back to Glen Dullin specifically, Irvin, uh, could you just tell us about the distillery because it's one of those distilleries that a visitor can't just go to, right? Doesn't have a visitor center, so there's always a little bit of mystery that shrouds these distilleries. So could you tell us a little bit about the history and uh, what it's like? Um, it's uh, it's an interesting distillery to us. It's been there since 1896. it is kind of one of those would have been very traditional of that of that era kind of the the pagoda roof and exactly what you expect in the 70s and um, we actually we took other than where the the warehouse that still exists uh, and the old maltings building and uh, we built a new distillery on the site and at the time it was very modern um uh you in gun calls it not the most attractive i call it 70s architecture brutalism okay it is that kind of style of building it's got an amazing glass front it looks over the the river fiddick and um, there's some of the interesting things about the distillery is it was one of the first um we had a family that both worked there called the ogilvies um with son and mother um he was the distillery manager and she had worked all over in um, speyside her father was a cooper at mortlach she had worked at petty bay and she actually worked there and the 70s into the 80s she remembers the computers being installed and it being a bit of a whoa this is really technologically driven the distillery which kind of fits in the way that we talk about it now is being quite modern but it's um, one of the interesting things is it had two distilleries operating on one site in parallel i think it was 72 to about around, around the mid 80s um which is quite cool so some of the releases that you've seen coming out have got that interesting mix of of two distilleries running parallel which is quite strange in scotch although it happens a wee bit more than you would think um 
But yeah, now we have one distillery operating on site. It makes about 6 million litres a year and it is renowned for producing that kind of grassy style of new make that we need to make the single on whiskey. It's got that funny thing as well where the, the spirit stills are bigger than the wash stills. Have you ever seen that before? I don't mm-hmm. quite know. No, that's... Yeah, I don't quite, I never quite get the reason behind it. But yeah, I always think it's quite nice. Upside down distillery, a bit odd, (laughs) but really good at producing that style of spirit that we need. Uh That's interesting. I've been to a ton of distilleries, but I've never seen the spirit still bigger than the wash still. So that's that's another reason to visit. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there's a, we've got a few of them. uh, And I've never managed to get the exact reason for it. I guess it's just about creating more copper contact, which is going to produce that lighter style of spirit, which is going to ultimately lead to something that is delicious, approachable and fruity. So like our, what we want to produce at our three single distilleries. Mm-hmm. So that uh, kind of nicely puts the, uh, you know, the character of the singleton in perspective, right? I would assume that that's the character of the 12 to begin with. And then there's more uh, cask variations in the 15 and 18. Could you just yeah. take us through the range? Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to. So um, they're actually really easy to, to sum up. And they kind of I apply the same logic to um, all three of the single distilleries, despite the fact that they obviously have different nuances because they come from different distilleries, right? But the range uh, can be summed up. Um, uh, it's all a mixture um, of American and European oak. Some of the European oak will have been seasoned with a mix of like all Russell and Pedro Jimenez, which is going to bring that richness and the American oak is going to give that vanilla toffee, butterscotch, popcorn, that kind of the things that you expect. Um, but the 12 year old um, is got obviously more of the distillery characteristic. Okay. It's got way more of that kind of ripe fruit note. Um, this It's kind of like an odd mixture of ripe and dry. It's got kind of, what's that baked fruit notes, pies, vanillas, toffees, but again, where this whiskey comes to life is the palate. I always describe it that if it were a noise, it would be okay. It's light, it's fresh, it's juicy. It kind of leaves you wanting to go back and taste again. Its finish is um, spicy and sweet. Once you've lost that, uh, you've lost that additional kind of mouth-watering fruit, and that is kind of the sign of the single. And for me, it's that real, real freshness. Um, so this is kind of fresh fruit and juicy. I like to call it, uh, often call it juicy fruit, which sounds like my rapping name. Um, anyway, um, the 15 um, is getting into more um, oak characteristics. It's getting into more of that kind of that baked fruit that we got in the 12 year old. It is, for me, spicy. Um, and all three of the singletons do exactly the same thing. They go from fresh to spicy, from 12 to 15. Um, you're getting more of those kind of sweet notes, more of those kind of almonds. Um, and it's got, it's still got that fruit ne- fr- fruitiness, but it is very much stepping backwards from it. And this is becoming more about the sweetness, okay? On the palate. I'm not drag that in ages, it's really good. Um, you're getting bucket loads of that kind of Christmas spice. It's like if you've taken the apple pie here and you've covered it in cinnamon and nutmeg and loads of toasted nuts um, and then served it with a big scoop of ice cream on the side. So that's the 15-year-old. The 18-year-old, um, the fruit turns tropical. It's kind of like, it's super, super, it's got that kind of real fermenty vibe to it, which probably isn't a great way to explain it, but it's it's massive, it's rich, it's got the kind of fresh fruit has turned into those pineapples and dates, but the difference with the Glendillon is it has a real complex dryness at the finish. Um, so it kind of, for me, it goes product of the distillation so you really get that kind of slow batch distillation that we talk about a lot when we talk about the singleton and um, we run our stills really softly and um, and that gets loads of copper contact and it gives you something that's light and juicy this to me feels like a real product of american oak okay it's got all the sweetness it's got all the dryness all those kind of um those kind of complexities and spices and then this um i mean the, there is that fermentation there as notes there it's got kind of like really kind of well ripened fruit and um, but at the back it just goes pure tropical and the depth on it is unbelievable i think 
the magic thing about let me a reminder. The magical thing about the singleton 18s, and all of them do it extraordinarily well, is you'll know that after 18 years in um, oak, the whiskey often is dominated and taken over by the oak. Mm -hmm. um, whereas this still has life on the palate. Okay, there's still that distillery characteristic, and I think for me that's a great sign of a single malt whiskey because we drink single malts because we want to feel that they are a product of that that place. Okay, you are literally driving to Dufton and you're walking past Gwendolyn and you are smelling everything they produce and you buy into that and then that is why you drink a single malt. Otherwise, there's no other reason for it. It is very much a product of place, and the. 18 year old is not over dominated by wood it has way more complexity but you still get that same so it still tastes like the distillate at Glendon and it's a magical in a word 18's balance like mm, I look forward to trying that sometime I, I haven't tried that uh, particular 18 yeah. I think I've tried the 18 at Glenord but not the Duff Town and uh, this one the, the 18 is the 18 at Glenord is does exactly the same thing. It's just Glenord uses more European oak, so the tropical is dialed up to 12. Okay, mm -hmm. it's way tropical. It's passion fruit. It's like everything that you expect. It comes like weird, like, like a bungle. Um, and but it still has that balance. You still got that perfect match between wood characteristic and distillery characteristic. The um, the 18s are a bit of a special treat, but. Um, I quite often get stuck into this and Christmas Day and things. Yeah, it's a wonderful whiskey. Mm -hmm. So is it time to mix a cocktail for us now? Yeah, you've not had anyone make a drink for you before, have you on this? So, uh -huh. First the, time, uh, yeah. Whiskey advisor exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, let me get this out of the way. And I'm going to make a drink for you called a plus two. Um, which is literally, as it sounds, it is um, one part singleton and then two parts other ingredients. The first being a still juice. I'm going to use apple juice. And then second is a fizzy juice, which is just literally classic soda water. So this is a drink I call the orchard. And I guess it falls right into our kind of brand strategy and our, like, well, how we talk about the single and that I would be making a drink here. This is how, how people generally will kind of first interact with single malt. It's a great accessible way to bring people on board um, with the category. So here I have 50 mils of the Singleton of Glendullin 12. Da, da, da. And then we're just going to add the still juice, which is apple juice, and then fizzy juice, which is soda water. It's super simple. It's equal parts. It's very, very simple to make. And it's deliberately unprescriptive, right? So I made it with apple juice and soda, but it can literally be made with anything that you want. Anything that you have lying around in the fridge, if you think that works really well with that single malt, then get it in because this is about encouraging experimentation, which is so important when we're trying to bring people on board. If When you like make a drink for someone, what tends to happen is that they won't have one ingredient and it'll stop them from making it straight away. They'll just go, I can't do that because I don't have the ingredient. But the plus two is about encouraging people to make drinks in their own way, which very much aligns with what we're trying to do as a single one. And it's a great way to bring people on board to the category. It's super accessible. For about the last 25 years or so in Scotch, we've literally went, do you drink um, whiskey? And someone goes, uh, no, I don't. And we go, go, drink that. Right? <laughs> And it's the worst way to bring people on board with it. And as whiskey people, um, it is super important for us to bring our friends that don't drink whiskey into the category, because I'll let you into a bit of a secret. Guess what you get for Christmas, right? You know, everyone, I don't like, uh, have you ever been bought whiskey stones? Right? Uh, no, I'm I sorry, haven't actually. I'm mm. sorry for all my family members if you're watching this video, right? But every year, one somebody buys me whiskey stones, and it's because it's that like default gift, right? That people think oh, I like whiskey. I'll get him these; they'll be really handy. They're not. 
right? But if you explain to people that, that, that and get them into the whiskey, then you start to get liquid. <laughs> okay, so it is within our interest to not scare people off. It is within our interest to offer brands like the Singleton in delicious formats that look like that. I mean, it's pretty appealing. I mean, look at that. It looks great. Um, that's probably my best mint garnish of the year on Zoom. <laughs> That's a lot of mint. You can make a few more cocktails after that with it. Yeah, I think so. This is we've got a, we've got a mint plant in the garden, so now all the mint garnishes have been getting more and more elaborate. <laughs> but yeah, so that it is the the single and plus two, and it is about encouraging people to try it their own way. And we've kind of I've done four um, that are available on my Instagram page that kind of reflect different moments where you'd enjoy the single ones. So this is the orchard. This is very much looking at that kind of apple a pear distillery characteristic that we spoke so much about. But there's some really interesting ones. There's one called the Snug, which is like cold brew coffee and cola. So it's kind of focusing on those darker, richer notes that you get in the 18. And it's it's cool. Like it's a really interesting example of how one whiskey can be used to create four different drinks and keep it interesting for people and keep it fun. And most importantly, Make it approachable and get people to stop buying your whiskey stones. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned it multiple times. I'm sure people are going to listen now. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. But thank you so much, Evan. It's been absolutely wonderful. Great fun having this conversation with you. But guys, if you want to log in to uh, Scott Sound Radio or check out these fun cocktails, I'm going to put Irwin's uh, details in the description below and also link his Spotify playlist apart from the singleton details down there. I guarantee it's a load of fun. Uh, so Irwin, any parting words for the viewers? No, thank you very much for joining it. And thank you for inviting me. It's been loads of fun and I love doing stuff like this. And um, let's do it again soon sometime. Oh, absolutely. In person, hopefully, yeah? Yeah, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take you to the lighthouse at Port Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> cheers. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Cheers, Evan. Oh, cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that was an absolutely fun conversation with Urban. I'm really looking forward to more conversations with him, and I'm going to be definitely checking out those cocktail recipes. Uh, so until the next time, please like, subscribe, and hit the little bell so you'll know every time we have a new video in the series. Cheers, guys.